Today I will break a bit of my process down for creating these pieces and I will show you some techniques on how to create these abstract looking materials. For some time now I felt like I needed to get a little bit back into just, you know, playing around in cinema without having a bigger purpose or a huge project in mind. So I had this idea of a sculpture and rocks sort of being cut from each other. There's a couple of different steps to this, so some are more interesting than others. But let me just show you where I started so it doesn't seem like everything went smooth. It didn't. The first thing was really finding the assets I needed. I already had a model of this Greek sculpture and it can be downloaded for free on Scanders World. The rocks I had to search a bit for through Megascans until I found something I liked. Luckily, they updated the plugin so you can actually import the assets in super easy. My first thought on how I could subtract an area in the rock with the sculpture and the other way around was to use the volume builder. The detail had to be very high, which meant that the first couple of hours playing around with this, there was a lot of waiting. And I mean a lot. I could clearly see that it was possible to achieve the desired effect, but the next problem came when I tried to add the material to the volume measure. Of course, after waiting for so long, another problem had to appear. Welcome to the world of 3D. So after looking around at the interwebs, I came to the conclusion, it can't be done. I suck and 3D probably isn't for me. But I punched the wall and got back to the computer and started thinking there must be another way. And then knew the solution must be everybody's favorite tool, the bully, the bully, the bull, the bullion, the bowl, the bowl, the bowl tool, the bully, the bullion tool. This way I could actually easily keep both textures and still keep the details, which of course meant more waiting time because it's still a fairly heavy effect, especially with these high poly objects. An important setting to tick off is this high quality. It saves you crashes and a bit of time. And at least this was fine for me with these objects. Okay, with this solved, I could get back to doing my subtractions of the rock and sculpture. The object on the bottom will act as a subtractor to the object on top. After this, connect and delete. And I know yes, a super destructive workflow. You really don't have to do this, but I didn't have the patience to wait anymore on things loading. And since I was happy with the result, it didn't really matter that much. And for me, it was also important just to keep going so I didn't get stuck trying to make things perfect. And now I really just repeated this process until I had three rocks with subtracted pieces. And that's really the process for this part. And as you can see, when you use the bool tool and add materials to the objects inside, after you connect and delete, it will make a selection tag for each material. Very convenient. Now to the interesting part, the material. Since my idea in the beginning was just the simple idea of a marble sculpture, and rocks being cut from each other, using just those materials, as you can see, did not create the most interesting look. And part of this was also just to explore, so I kept playing more around with the material and tried out different things. I can barely remember what some of these nodes does, but let's build something similar in a separate scene, so you at least can get the basics of this effect. Okay, so I'm not really going to build every single material node, of the material I used, since that's not really the important part, I just stripped this material down to the bare minimum. So my base material, which is the marble material, this will sort of be underneath it all. Let's first just add all of the ingredients. Max noise, ramp, color correct, color invert, triplanar, and a new material. So I'm putting all of these things together except for the noise and color invert for now. Using the diffuse channel in the material, the ramp is where the colors come from. And I think these presets are usually pretty good. At least you get a good starting point. It's, a, you know, it's really a quick way to get a color scheme. The triplanar mapper is used to map and adjust the size of the mapping. The color correct is really for hue and maybe a bit of contrast. 
but the real magical ingredient is the Maxon noise. Add this into the ramp and that is where the fun begins. Play around with the settings until you find something you like and then maybe turn the animation setting up. I used 0.15 for this animation. The color invert can be an extra thing to get completely different colors. Since there is the noise, the ramp, the color correct, invert, triplanar mapper and even your material node, there are so many factors that are procedural which can give you so many unique looks by just changing one setting. Endless variants, endless fun. I used the metal setting in the material to give some shininess to it. I also used the whole setup in a bump, which was connected to all of the material nodes to give the noise pattern some depth. As you can see in some of these recordings, my outliner is a bit messy. I had different cameras, multiple lights, some of them turned on, some of them turned off. When I work on more conceptual pieces like this, I find it much more productive to just go and then clean up the mess later on. I don't want to think about how messy the scene is or if I'm doing things the correct way. The only thing I care about in this process is trying to make things look good or interesting, trying out something new or at least just being productive. Let me just go over one of the final lighting setups, what I ended up using for a couple of the scenes. My lighting setup was by no means surgical, but I think I sort of just took the same approach as I did with everything else in this project. You know, just exploring and trying out different things. Add different light sources, try positions, colors and power. Again, have a play, see if suddenly something you didn't expect will appear. I used an HDR slash dome light to give the scene a bit of a, like an overall fill light. Using one infinite light to give rim light to the objects and another infinite light to just add some shadows. I just used two long S cubes to block the light and I think this just adds a little bit and sort of, you know, breaks up the light a little bit. I think it sort of adds this some, something dynamic in the scene. Can't quite put a, put a word on it. The spotlights is used sort of as they sound, as spots. The spotlights are a bit more direct than the area lights and can be focused in on areas better, I think. The first spotlight here adds a bit of red tint to the rocks and sculpture. The other one is actually just for the background plane to give a little bit of that ambient light. The area light that I have in here isn't maybe the best place light in the world, but it ended up staying there since I liked the blue tint it added. And that's really it for the lights, at least for this scene. But it's pretty similar in the others. I like to always begin with the dome light uh, with an HDR to get, you know, a quick basic lighting setup and then afterwards add the spe specific lights in. And sometimes in the end, I will end up just removing the dome light completely because then the rest of the lighting setup might be enough. Usually an HDR is just nice to give your reflection something well to reflect. That's really it for this small breakdown. There's not a lot to it, but I haven't really created anything like this before. So, you know, I didn't know how to do this when I began the project. So maybe you learned a thing or two as well. Hopefully you did. Uh, and if you didn't, hopefully there was something entertaining in here. Thanks so much for watching. Leave a like and maybe consider subscribing. See you in the next one. The bull, the bull, the bull, the bull, the boolean tool. The bull, the bull tool, the boolean tool.